Hey, everybody, welcome back to our podcast. It's uh, Pastor Matt Molt, Pastor Austin Molt, father and son duo doing preaching to the choir. We're not oh. actually preaching, but we're talking about things that might pertain to our choir. If we're we talking had, to the choir. If we had a choir. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I love these. We're doing behind the scenes mm -hmm. uh, discussions, conversations you and I would actually have in real life to try to think through kind of in depth conversations about real life topics that are important that we might not have on a Sunday in a sermon per se, but it's something that, hey, let's deep dive, unpack it, and talk about real questions that people have. And uh, so it's been great. And we're really glad you're, you're here with us today. And so, yeah. Here we go. Today we're talking about um, sexuality. Let's go. Identity, all that stuff. Okay. Uh, this definitely feels like this is a subject where, um, at least it seems this way, it seems like there's been a lot of strong opinions within Christendom yeah. um, on this subject. And as culture, you know, we notice as culture begins to talk more about whatever topic it is, um, it always creates a rift and people have to figure out, okay, what do I believe? What are the boundaries? What are the boundaries? What's okay, what's not? What's, yeah, what's okay, what's not okay? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just, let, let me just ask you a few questions. Yeah, let's go. Because you, you have, you've met with a lot of people to talk about um, sexuality, identity, and stuff like that, yeah. I'm assuming over the years. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I think, let's just start with this. I think, obviously, everybody, to some extent, has struggled mm -hmm. in their life with their sexuality in whatever way that looks like. By struggle, you mean we've sinned. They've, we've all in sinned our, in this in area. sexuality or in our mind or... Yes. All, all, yeah. There's sure. been lust in some way. Okay. Um. And I think one of the one of the most pressing questions that we could start off with is: Is it a sin to have same sex attraction as a Christian? Um, and let's just start there. Sure. Is, is it, yeah. What, what are your thoughts? If someone says I'm same sex attracted, Pastor Matt, right. is that okay? Wow, that's a great question. So we have. Um you know, our heartbeat as a church has been to let Jesus stand stand on his own two feet. And we want everybody and anybody to come to our church. And anybody who comes to our church, we don't call them a Christ follower unless they genuinely are following Christ. Which in the in that, what has happened is we have... What you mean by that is that people come here. People attend church. That, that doesn't mean they're a Christ and follower. They might not be a Christian. But they're attending. But they might, yeah, they might yeah. show up on Sunday. Right. And that could be, so let's talk about specifically um, same-sex attraction, you know, hom homosexuality, whether it's uh, male or female, uh, dealt, dealt with uh, questions and talked with a lot of wonderful people about their life story in this area. So when people have asked me, hey, uh, and, we, and we have people in our church, you know, today that people wouldn't maybe know because we don't know everybody's personal lives, but people actually, these are real thoughts and real feelings that people have. Right. So... When people have said, hey, I, I actually am same-sex attracted, then there's some follow-up questions for me. So the questions are, okay, are you, um, are you actively, you know, sinning with those thoughts? Like, are you hooking up with people? Are you in, involved in sexual activity with people? Uh, or is it just, you know, a struggle in your mind and you know that it's probably would be wrong if you did act on that, but just the thoughts torment you and you're not sh because of your Christian faith and so you're not sure... And so let's take the simplest scenario that somebody goes, hey, I'm just, I have these attractions, but I haven't done anything with them. I don't think attraction is sin. So, and, and here, here's why. Um, uh, I'm, I could be attracted to uh, see a woman that, uh, you know, is beautiful on the outside, and I could have an attraction and, and notice that, but not let it become sinful by just going, okay, I recognize that that's, not my wife, not somebody I should, you know, have a, a sexual thought towards. Right. And so I'm going to set that thought aside because it, I know that ultimately that will be harmful. It's not what Christ wants for me. So I could set that aside. Because I have that attraction uh, does not mean that I've sinned. Mm -hmm. So temptation and sin are two different things. Yes. So I think um, 
you know, in the 1980s and uh, in 90s, this became a really hot, hotbed, uh, <laughs> hotbed topic. <laughs> no pun intended. And I don't know if that's the right phrase or not, but <laughs> it became a hot topic because people said, hey, uh, well, it, you know, God made me this way. Or, no, God could not have made me, could, you know, Christians would say. And to me, it's an irrelevant um, question. All of us are born into sin. All of us have a bent. And like you said, we all have a, a desire for intimacy in our life, and that would play out in the physical world with sexuality. And so to have desire uh, is not wrong. And then to have that attraction, uh, all of us have some attractions that I think are um, a desire gone awry. I think everybody has some of that in them. And yes. so um, the, on, a, on a simple level, the answer is no. Now, Acting out on um, homosexual uh, and having homosexual behavior or um, heterosexual um, sexual behavior that's not within the context of marriage, any of those things, there are a, a perversion, if you want to say, this, to use a, to, uh, it's going a, away from what God intended, which is for us to either be celibate and have our, our life and our meaning and our identity in Him alone and to be satisfied with Him. Or if we're in a marriage, to enjoy uh, the beauty of sex in, in that uh, heterosexual marriage as God made, uh, and anything outside of that would be sin. So anything outside of the really narrow window mm -hmm. uh, really uh, is sinful if we act upon it. Mm -hmm. But if, if, we, if we have a thought and we set it aside, go, no, I'm going to follow Christ, it's not a sin. Yeah, maybe it's just helpful also just to state up front, too, that... Um I don't like it when people speak online in generalities uh, mm -hmm. when they say the church. I've, I, you know, I've seen people say the church doesn't do enough outreach. Who are you talking about? Cri like just cri like right. all Christians around the world. You wouldn't know. The entire you, church. You wouldn't know what they do. Right. You know, or the, wh why does the church not talk about this? Are you uh, like, are you talking about your church? You know, so I, I cause I just, I want to know what they're really getting after. Yeah. So I don't want to speak, in, I don't want to do that, but it's probably true that um, maybe people who genuinely do love Jesus or want to follow Jesus um, have felt a little on the outside um, because if they were same-sex attracted, they were same -sex attracted um, and their thought might be this, maybe you could respond to this, their thought might be, Okay, but there's people in this whole church, and, you know, I don't know how many of them, but there's got to be a, some people who are in sin or struggling in sin. You know, they're trying to walk this out. They're trying to walk in repentance. And they're sleeping with their girlfriend. They're watching naked people on the internet. They're lusting in their hearts and minds, and they're, th they're fantasizing in their minds. And... But I'm being told this or that, you know, and they, sure. and, and, and that's obviously not our stance. You know, we want to, we want to be, so how would you respond? So I think if, if I'm hearing what you're saying, Austin, you're saying a, a person who's same sex, same sex attracted could come into church and feel like homosexuality is pointed out as a worse sin. And yet all the other sexual sins that the Bible talks about are not addressed I'm, in the same. Yeah, I'm saying. Consciousness. Yeah, right. I'm, well, I'm just saying, yeah, someone okay. might feel that way, and they yeah. might go, but isn't, isn't, aren't a lot of people? Right. So, so what, what's wrong with that? You right. Know? So I do think this. I do think that there, um, I do think that um, pornography, especially with the Internet, has gotten so pervasive for people that the church, you know, really could be at fault for not addressing that sin among heterosexual people strongly enough and so we almost like we tolerated that but then we're like but we're but we will speak out against homosexuality as if that sexual sin is is worse or different than that right and that's i think that's kind of yes. what we're getting at and there's a place where our churches and us as people we have to just get very we have to really do a deep dive into what does scripture teach about sexuality and identity and, and, do, and we have to do the hard work of repentance in our lives and it, across the board. Yeah. So I've had somebody, for instance, come to me. This is one of the ways I approach this topic with people. 
people will come to me and say, hey, uh, I like your church service. My first time here. I have a friend who's gay. Um, you know, if I invite them, you know, would that be okay? So I'm not sure what they mean by that. Do they mean that they're like, you know, just like any other worldly person out there just trying to find a date on a Friday night, sleeping around and all that? Like, or does it mean that if somebody's same sex attracted but not sinning, would they feel comfortable here? Or are we going to point that sin out as worse than others? So there's different questions. So I always start a, a conversation with somebody like that and I say, well, let me ask you this. You know, do you believe uh, and are you okay that we teach the Bible or do you believe the Bible? And if they're like, well, yeah, I think the Bible, that's great. It's a Christian church. That makes sense. All right. Do you, um, you know, let me, let me say it like this and I'll, I'll go into this. All of us, heterosexual, homosexual, non-binary, whatever, you know, you want to identify right. yourself. When we come to Christ, all of us have to submit our entire life to Christ, including our sexuality. So none of us, homosexual, her, uh, heterosexual, bisexual, none of us get to get the right to, um, to t say, hey, I want to I believe in Christ, but do my own thing with my sex life. All of us have to submit to Christ. And, and, and Jesus actually directly speaks to heterosexual sin and lust, and uh, he's, he's tough on men, uh, in particular in Scripture. We have to submit to that. So all of us come in on a level playing field in this area. And when I've talked to people like that and go, so can we agree that if we're going to come to Christ, the Bible and what Jesus taught us, all of us have to go, okay, he's either in charge of our life and we're going to obey what he says, or we're not. And so then that becomes a fair playing field. And so that's actually been a guiding principle for how I've tried to, you know, address this. Yeah, that's really good. Um, I, let me, let me, you go let me, ahead. Here, here's one of the new things that's happened. Yeah. In the last uh, probably 10 years, it's become popularized, but in the last 20 years, technologically, Med, the medical field has been able to do, um, you know, they have been for even, you know, beyond that, you know, farther back than that. But for somebody who goes, hey, I, I'm a woman, I feel like I'm a woman trapped in a man's body or a man trapped in a woman's body or I'm transgender. And so I want to start the transition process. I want to be called by these pronouns. I want to identify this way. That has become something that in, our, in the American world, because of the amount of money that's here and the amount of medical research that's here, the people have been able to actually do physical changes to their gender. And uh, that has become a question where, okay, well, where, where do we draw the lines of does God have a say about that? And that's become a real issue uh, yeah. for people. And yeah. um, I, think, I think that the Bible does have some very strong, clear things to say about it. Mm-hmm. And uh, for whoever's listening to this, and like you said, we could get taken out of context right. for sure. So we could just pull a clip. I think, that, I think that God is aware that we struggle sexually. Yeah. Every one of us. Yeah. To, to be holy. Yeah. And to submit that area of our life to him. Yeah. And I think that God is incredibly merciful. Mm -hmm. And he wants to help us live in a way where we flourish in our union with God, whether mm. we're single or whether we're married. I think that that's God's heartbeat. Yeah. He's not trying to create such a narrow path that it feels like nobody can survive. The beauty th about Jesus is that he can actually help us to thrive in life outside of the trappings of sexual addiction and mm. um, identity crisis or, uh, you know, or whatever. I, like Jesus really wants to give us intimacy with him mm -hmm. that and he wants to give us identity from him because he's the originator and the cr creator so just want to go on record starting this conversation with those things that's really good um i started reading not for <clears throat> studying for something or whatever just i really like this author and i wanted to read her book um nancy pierce's book called love thy body and so far it's F fantastic you know she does a great job of just picking apart worldviews and um this one's all about sexuality and the mm -hmm. you know and and a lot of stuff we're talking about in her book though she i was just looking up to make sure i 
real quick on my phone as you were talking just to make sure I was going to represent it right. But she talks about how um, when Roe v. Wade was written and established, that was the first time in, in, in American literature where there was a separation between personhood and humanity. So you, so in, in other words, um, a baby in the womb was, could be, was called a person but not a human. And she said that that was never talked about in that in that way beforehand. And she uses that to talk about how we have this split view of the internal and the external. And we what culture kind of is screaming right now is what you do with your body is a just a physical transactional thing. And we don't we don't not christians but the world doesn't see themselves as a holistic person body soul and spirit and she used examples she goes you know we treat sexuality different so here's an example she goes when, when you're eating you don't say my mouth is chewing food or my mouth is eating you say, you say i'm eating like like you know she talks about the language we use and how we're holistic beings that what we do with our body affects us emotionally spiritually mentally and vice versa mm -hmm. And she talks about this study, and I'll, I don't want to keep just going on here, but she talks about this study, how on college campuses they have what's called hookup culture. Mm -hmm. And she interviews this gal who says that it's almost cool to act like, you know, you can hook up with somebody and, it, and you just leave them and, and, and it doesn't bother you. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, I did that. It's like going to coffee with them. Mm -hmm. And she says, but that's just not true to the reality people's hearts get broken when they've been sexually faithful to one person in a marriage or not even in a marriage and somebody cheats somebody walks away it, it there there is something more than a physical right it, it, transaction it, it, it there us. and, and she, her point is god made us mm -hmm. this way mm -hmm. and we must treat our bodies with the same intent that we treat our spirits and our souls yeah um Anyways, I thought that was an interesting breakdown that she, you know, she, she kind of, and so if anyone's wanting to go more into it, that, that's a book, yeah, Love Thy Body. And, and but you know that I'm a passionate um, fan of Bonhoeffer. Yes. Uh, who, who was uh, killed in, in uh, World War II. Pastor, teacher, spy. Prophet. Prophet. Yeah. Yeah. And he, um, he wrote some incredible things. One of his big points was that the world is not two realms, it's one realm. And it was the same kind of thing that mm. yes. what we do in our bodies is reflective of our soul and our souls are reflective of our bodies and that they're one and that we can't have an internal mindset that says, well, I believe in Christ, but my body does things Christ doesn't says not to do. No, those are connected. And, 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 the, and the scripture teaches us on a heterosexual sin level. He says, if you join yourself to a harlot or a prostitute, you become one with them. Mm. Meaning it's not just a physical transaction. You're, it's soul to soul, spirit to spirit. There's a joining there. There's something ha that happens. Through a physical act. And yes. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, we, we would experience that too. Like if you, if you ever got so mad that you punched a hole in the wall, what was inside came out, yeah. you know? And uh, so there's that. I, I do think this. I think that here's, here's what I do think. I do think that people today are unaware of biblical ethics, Christians, and maybe how they should live those out. I think that there's a culture that I think is dangerous that would say, I can have, um, you know, like, a, let's take some, some young adult single people. Yeah. I think there's a culture that could say, well, I can, I can sin a little bit sexually, whatever a little bit looks like to them, or I can sin, but I'll ask God for forgiveness because mm -hmm. God's forgiving. Yeah. So I'll just, you know, kind of clean up on Sunday or whatever. And I think that uh, that's a really dangerous misunderstanding of of who god is um you know and and then we have to go hey the way we live our life is reflective of our life yeah <laughs> and so if we if we're angry uh, a little bit and have outbursts we're an angry person if we're sexually um you know you know doing things we shouldn't be doing it's because there's a brokenness in us sexually. Yeah. So I do think that Christ brings healing to that, though. And that's the, the yeah. beautiful thing. We, have, we can get to that. But yeah. Um, you know, I, I, think, I think we, I think anybody who loves Jesus and, and, and maybe there's an area of their life they're struggling in the sense that they are 
maybe they're slipping, you know, in, into sin, but, but they're, they're, they're not wanting to stay there. They're not wanting to live there. They're wanting to pursue Christ. There, there has, I, I want to say to all those people, regardless of what the struggle looks like, hey, we're all in this together then because we're all trying to go towards Christ and that's the goal. And we're not going to dwell in sin, live in sin and be content with sin. We want to live by conviction. And yes, we might fall, but the righteous man gets up seven times and we're going to keep moving forward. We're going to have a count, you know, all that stuff. But I think for the people who maybe they're not there yet and they're kind of content with that two world view of doing stuff with my body, but loving Jesus in my heart type of thing. What I want to tell them is, and I think it's a good way to approach it is, Hey, we have to trust that Jesus and following him is going to be the most fulfilling thing in our life. Not these temporal things that we go after. For example, my friend Cole used to be a diesel mechanic. If he tells me something about my car, you know, saying like, Hey, don't do this. Um, trust me. One day it's going to explode. I'm bound to trust him because I know he knows just like yeah. so much more about the car than me. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of, maybe a lot of people who just, they don't trust, they don't trust, um, they don't trust that God's ways are more fulfilling, more satisfying, and that sin is destructive even if you don't see it right now. Yeah. I mean, what does James says? He says, sin, you know, sin full grown produces death like, like a child. It, it grows. Yeah. And so undealt sin, you may not see the effects right now, but I promise you in 20 years, yeah, <laughs> you will, you know, and so, well, there, so there, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so here's the problem is that, um, sexual expression is so strong and affects us so immensely that it leaves, you know, chemical pathways in our brain. It bonds us to people like it, it, it literally has a transformative effect on us. So it's a gift from God, but also something that we need to steward. I, I would say this, that like, like somebody who's struggling with pornography, they ha they, it's not helpful to them to go, hey, I'm struggling. I'm just going to try to do it a little bit less. There needs to be a place in their life, if they're going to follow Christ, to say, Jesus, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with this. I'm going to set some boundaries. I'm going to get some software. I'm going to get some accountability. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to put limits on my uh, Netflix ratings abilities. Right. I'm going to give other people access. I'm going to, um, I'm going to inundate my life with scripture. I'm going to, what the Bi all those things are what the Bible calls repentance, a turning away from indulging. And I'm going to think about it different, go, nope, I'm going to do it Jesus's way. Right. So the beginning of faith is repentance. It's literally saying, I'm going to turn away and not allow the struggle, and I'm going to start doing it Christ's way. Now, there's a difference where if we're following Christ and there's a, a mistake, there's a, a, you know, a struggle, a, but our, our mindset and our heart and the, the allegiance that we have is towards following Jesus, even if it's not what we want. Mm. That's different than going, well, I'm just kind of struggling, so I'm just kind of like going to keep going to church but keep struggling and allowing the struggle. That's not repentance. That's trying to have two lovers. Yes, yeah. Well, I, I can't remember who said this. I just heard it um, on like a YouTube video or a podcast or something like a week or two ago. But I was listening to someone talk and they said, um, your strongest desire isn't your deepest desire. Yeah, John Mark Comer. It was a John Mark Comer. Okay. Yeah, and he's quoting a book called Invitation to a Journey, which I just Okay, wrote. okay. But I loved that because, you know, because sometimes in the moment, we have these temptations, whatever it might be. I mean, beyond sexuality. I mean, it could, could be gossip, lying, whatever. And you have this strong desire. But if you notice when a Christian, you know, okay, I'll talk about myself. When I as a Christian I, and, I, and I sin in some area of my life, whatever that might be, there is something that breaks me and I go, God, I don't want to do that. Now, why, why do I, why, why is that? It, it could be maybe guilt or shame in a negative sense. And people have to, you know, we have to have a correct understanding of God. There's like a spaceship flying over our church right now. I, hear <laughs> I don't know if you can hear us on the podcast, but there's something's flying. An Anyways, it's an airplane is landing on our church. But the reason I, 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 my heart breaks there is not because, oh, God hates me or whatever. It's because my, my deepest desire is I want to please Christ and I want to live 
for him. I want union with God. And I want union with God. Nothing to interrupt that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. John Mark Comer says it just to repeat that. Yeah. We're used to our strong desires, but those should be pointing us to our deepest yes. desires. And our deepest desire is to actually be known by God. Yeah. And so like uh, St. Augustine, who was a very immoral, sexually loose young person, uh, until he gave his heart to Christ. Yeah, he was known for that. He was absolutely, and he, he admits that. And he says this, any young man who walks into a brothel or like a, you know, a, a prostitute house is actually looking for the transcendent, looking for the divine. They're mm. looking for something in their body to let them know there's something greater than what I'm experiencing now. Wow. And, but that's a strong desire, but it's a pointer to the fact that we're in disunion from God and that what we long for is for God to say, I see you, I accept you, right. I made you, I dearly love you. Yeah. And that's really our, our deepest uh, desire. So how uh, we, we've, we've, I've kind of phrased some questions as if, you know, talking about them like in first person, if you will, like, what would you say to someone who said this? Sure. Um, but m maybe to somebody who this isn't right now a big um, area that they're struggling with, but they're, but they're a Christian and they have friends who disagree with them or family members or whatever. Yeah. Um, maybe speak to that person. And how do we have a balanced approach and a balanced perspective of compassion and conviction as Christians? How, how, how are we gracious yeah, towards people sure. and compassionate for, for whatever they're going through. And we, we hold strongly to our convictions and we're not jerks and we don't write people off and we're not pharisaical because we also sin too. How do we have that balance? Sure. So I've had people come into the church, for instance, and they'll talk to me afterwards and like, hey, that was a great uh, talk. And I'm not really a religious person and whatever. And you probably don't think this is good, but I'm, I'm sleeping around, I'm doing this and I don't know if I'm ready to start serving God. I don't want to even know if I want to tell you. And I'm like, what I've told people is like, hey, look, if you're not following God, the best you can do is to just go get his, you know, enjoy the best alcohol, have the best sexual experiences. You, you like, you're not responsible to God because you've chosen to not live underneath his rule. Do what you, do the best you can. Get all the fun that you can. That's, that's all you're going to have. And ultimately, like that, the rules don't apply to you. Right. Because you're not following. Yeah. Right. And so, ultimately that will lead you to a place of going, this is empty. Like it doesn't meet my deepest needs. So if somebody goes, Hey, I, I want to follow Christ, but I'm, I'm really like, you know, I, you know, I watch pornography and masturbate every night and I just like, I, I have a big sexual drive and all that. And they go, but I want to serve Christ. And I, at that point, it's a conversation of going, okay, you're going to have to choose to follow Christ or follow what you want. Like there's, there's a separation. There is something uh, about repentance if you're going to follow Christ. So I do think it's okay. So, you know, your, your question about like, Hey, what about, how do we, how do we be gracious? So if somebody comes in to church or somebody has a conversation and people find out that we're pastors, like when we'd be at your guys's uh, basketball well, games and they'd be like, Oh, you're pastors. Sorry for the F word I just said. Right. And I'm like, Hey, it's cool. Just you can do what you want. Be yourself. Could, like, can I just rephrase it yeah. a little bit? Just yeah. because, um, because I think maybe a lot of people, the conversations they're going to have it probably won't be in church. That probably happens for you the most. Yeah. But, you know, but I, um, I, I think. So, I, so I have a real life example. Oh, okay. A real life example would be like, um, there used to be families, uh, Christian families. Okay. And then they find out that they're, Kid went off to college, started, moved in with her girlfriend. It's being sexually active. And so then because they're a Christian family, they don't want to let that immorality, they don't want that couple to sleep at their house when they come to visit at Thanksgiving. And so then that kid feels very judged and like, it's like, hey, well, we're trying to protect, you know, the standards of our house. I think it's okay to say, hey, you know, in our house, this is the rules in our house, but what you do in your house is okay with you. Like, I think we have to let people have the freedom to do what they want and just to say, Hey, just so you know, I might not do that. I'm not going to do that just because of my beliefs. Your beliefs may be different. And so you can do what you want. I think we can respect people and I think we can love people because they're people. 
So the problem is, you know what, when we go through a path of repentance and the struggle of trying to loosen our inner selves from the physical feelings and attachment of maybe a lifestyle of sexual sin, and we start to follow Christ, it can become such a struggle and we put some boundaries in place that we want to put those boundaries on somebody who's not even trying to follow Christ or even somebody new in the church mm. and go, hey, you can't watch that movie or you can't do this because that could lead to that. And what happens is we can set up boundaries that might not be helpful to that person, but they were helpful to us. Mm. So there's a difference between clear sin and boundaries. Right. I will give you an example. Yeah. We grew up in a very conservative house. I did. And so like to go to, to school dances, public school dances was a no, no because it could lead, it was close physical contact with a girl could lead to sexual arousal and could make you want to do things that you weren't supposed to do. So, the clear biblical line was no sex with the high school girl. <laughs> That's a clear biblical rule. The boundary that we put up to keep us even more distanced from the possibility of sin was don't go to a dance. <laughs> right. Okay, so, so what happens in Christianity, we, we have sin, sin and nonsense. We understand that, but we set up boundaries that sometimes are not necessarily biblical. So, so for somebody, they might be able to go to a dance and just have a great time dancing and not make it sexual at all. They're just you know, getting their Saturday night fever on, just, you know, and going for it. And for other people, though, they might have to go, hey, I have to have a boundary because that's how I got all my hookups. It started in high school, going to the dances. And, and so for me, that's, it's the yeah, same it's thing with, with alcohol. Yeah. So a lot of people, I grew up, same thing, very conservative. And so it was no alcohol because that would lead to sin. Well, I have come to find out that you can enjoy a glass of wine with a dinner or something like that, and it's not sin. But if it causes you to sin, then you need to you set up a boundary. For me, that's a boundary, but it's not a biblical boundary. It's just a personal boundary. Yeah. So I think that's some of the that's discernment good, yeah. when we're dealing with people that live differently than us. Yeah. Um, it, is, it is interesting to me, and I, we're probably coming up on a wrap here, but it is interesting to me when um, culture, and I, when I'm saying culture, I mean, you know, a, a, anything from somebody that's really big in the limelight to what's, you know, what's being talked about on mainstream media to like any, any of those things when they're shocked, when people are shocked that, um, cr on what Christians believe about sexual ethics, because it, it's never changed, right. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's never changed. But what, I, you know, what I'm interested in is, you know, people can go, God doesn't care about this and that, you know, as long as you're a good person, as long as you don't hurt anybody, as as your heart's, in the, right heart's in the right place, you're faithful to somebody. And I go, you know, or there, there, I even had students uh, send me videos uh, probably a year ago. It was a video was circulating on the internet about how the word homosexuality wasn't important to the scripture until the like 1800s or whatever. Um, and they were going, is that true? And stuff like that. And, what I'm trying to get after with people is going, how do we, how do we determine um, what is true? What is true in the Bible? What like inter like what's what, the what biblical are the, interpretations? What, are the rules, what are, yeah? Okay. How, okay, is this a sin or not a sin? Mm -hmm. You know, um, did Jesus really rise, raise from the dead or not with the body? You know, is hell real or not real? Yeah. You know, um, and I think a lot of the reason maybe. Um, I mean, if we're just being frank, th the reason culture pushes back sometimes on Christian values, Christian ethics, Christian doctrine, um, obviously it's because they don't agree, but they don't agree because um, the way they come to truth is not rooted. It, it, it's rooted in feelings or experiences or whatever. I think we've got to be maybe compassionate towards people who are coming from that, from that, but Christians can do that too. And that's what I want to ask about compassion and conviction because our convictions have to be rooted in the Bible. Yeah. They have to be rooted in the Christian tradition. Um, but we all, we, but we also got to treat people like, like they're made in the image of God because they are, you know, does that make sense? Absolutely. That was a long way of saying it, but it, it, it's both. And so, so let me say, it, can I say, yeah, it, go ahead. Clear, clear things. Jesus goes to um, Zacchaeus's house. The Bible says he, he and his friends had bad reputations. They weren't just sinners. They were sinners with bad reputations. Mm -hmm. 
Jesus goes and hangs out with them. Because for Jesus, being in that house crossed a Jewish boundary that said, hey, we don't want to be in there because we don't want to be influenced by that. But that wasn't a sin to go into that house. And Jesus loved people enough to go be right. in their world. And he ended up being such a light that he, he drew people towards mm. the purposes of God. I want to be really clear as we um, get toward the end of the podcast on to summarize. And we, we didn't want to start with this because it just gets taken out of context. Here's the clear teaching of scripture about sexuality. If there's any unclarity, Bible's clear that we are to be, um, uh, that, that sexual activity of any kind is only acceptable in a legal marriage between one man and one woman. This has been the biblical ethic for centuries. I mean, I was reading church history. This has been the, this is not a new thing. This has been hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Jesus goes beyond just the sexual activity. He says, if you lust for someone with your eye, it's the same as if you've done it with your body. And he's joining the yes. internal and the external. Great. Yeah. And he's saying, yes, you need to control your body, but you need to, to, to let God's work go into your mind and into your soul and work there as well. Yeah. And so that was a clear standard of Christ. The Ten Commandments have uh, a commandment, you, you shall not commit adultery. In other words, it should be faithfulness. And the reason that Jesus and the Scriptures have such tight circle around sexuality is because it's a pointer, it's a symbol of God's faithfulness to us. <laughs> and that's in Ephesians. It talks about that it's a picture of Jesus and us right. as his church. And because of his intense faithfulness for us, he wants that to be reflected in our lives. Mm. And our culture is not going to get that. Yeah. So premarital sex, extramarital sex, homosexual sex, uh, anything outside of what the Bible has taught is sinful, whether it's pornography or what it, any of those things. That is the narrow, straight, uh, laced, tight, clear yeah. biblical ethic that as Christians, we are called to follow that. And so I just wanted to go on record going, that is the clear boundary. Now, in addition to that, because it affects all of us on some level, the Bible has hope and the Bible has help for those things, which I don't think we have time to go into a whole lot, yeah. but there's a lot of great books um, yeah. that help us, a lot of great discipleship, the, the gift of the Holy Spirit being self-control yep. so many good things so so god doesn't ask us to do something that he's not going to help us with yes the um no matter what someone no no matter what sin or area someone um struggling. is sinning and yeah. struggling when if they agree with god um and they yeah if they agree with god then um they can make it and what I mean by that is they agree Jesus Christ is Lord, Savior, died, buried, resurrected. And they also agree with God about what he says about their life. And they go, this is sinful. That's not to say you're not going to sin. Right. But, that's, but, but what it is saying is you have a fixed heart and allegiance towards Jesus and his word. And you agree with that. And sometimes your life doesn't agree, your actions don't agree with, with what you believe. But that's why we have the church, and that's why the Holy Spirit helps us, and that's why God gives us grace to empower us. Yeah. So, and, and what we can't do is we can't go backwards and go, I've struggled so much that this must be something that God allows, and so I'm going to just believe that God's going to allow me to sin, and we start going backwards. I mean, would you not agree that not only how people view sexuality, that's part of it, but also their sexual activity is one of the most, I want to be careful. It has knocked out a lot of people. You mean from the faith? Yes. Absolutely. Be and you know why? It's why? It's so, our, our culture is so sexualized. Every commercial, right? Uh, everything. It's so, it's so promoted, you know, you be you, take care of your needs, 
find out what you what your deepest desire what you really want go after it and it, it's this it's this dark we don't even see it anymore but it's this overwhelming sexualization of our culture that just accepts that as normal and says that you can't you're not going to find meaning in life unless you're also unless part of that is your sexual fulfillment the way you want it customized for you it whatever that looks like because you deserve it, it like everything points towards that mm. so to stand as a christian yes. and go i'm going to choose to be abstinent right just seems overwhelming for people yes yes um culture does does tell people uh, essentially to be their own god because we believe god's the one who creates morality we believe that god's the one who creates lo- you know law we believe that god's the one who gives fulfillment and pleasure and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And culture kind of says, you self-identify. Don't let anyone tell you who you are. You self-identify. Yeah. You're of infinite value because you're you. Right. And, um, and, and the scriptures say... What's your truth? Yeah. What's your truth? <laughs> well, and the scriptures say, why, you know, it's, it's, it's wrong for us as clay to say to the potter, right? how come you made me this way? Yeah. No, we, we got to go. I trust you. You created me. So I wanna, I wanna, I'm not just going to go shallow into my faith. I'm going to go deep dive and go, God, help me, to, help me to work through this to follow you. Yes. To find my, not just my strong desires, my deepest desires in you. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think um, it's possible to love people, be involved in the Zacchaeuses, because we, we were all Zacchaeus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and without Christ, we all are Zacchaeus. Uh, but it's possible to love people and be involved in the world and not conform to the patterns of this world, as Romans 12, 2 says. Okay, why don't you give people, like, top two or three, like, just resources. If they go, man, I really want to do some work on this area in my life, I I'll, sh- I'll give them. Yeah, I mentioned one earlier. This is, a, this is a resource that you recommended that I read a few years ago. But uh, A People to Be Loved um, by Preston Sprinkle. Fabulous book. And it's on the topic of homosexuality. And whether you have read a lot of theology or stuff about the Bible, this is a really easy to understand. Yeah, and it goes through book. each scripture Every, where homosexuality, homosexuality is actually talked about, right? Yeah, and he even says, he'll even go through certain portions and go, people use this to talk about homosexuality, but it's not about homosexuality. Right. Here's what it's right. about. But then he'll go through other passages, and it's just absolutely fantastic on that front. So yeah. that would be my only, that'd be my best recommendation. No, that's great. Uh, I would say that there's a, an author named um, Dan Allender, who is a Christian um, counselor, and he's the leading um, counselor, really, in America for, uh, especially in Christian circles, for helping people who've been through sexual trauma, and uh, it's called The the Wounded Heart, and Healing for the Wounded Heart, maybe is how the book, but it's Dan Allender, great author, deep dive into the sociological impact of, you know, um, things that have happened to us or we've been involved in and, and how God can begin to restore that. And then a really short book, a third one I'll throw in the mix, is Sam Alberry, uh, Why Does God Care Who I Sleep With? <laughs> and a uh, super short book. He's from England. It's a great title. Yeah, and it's a really good, simple look at it. Um, and if you're watching or, uh, or, listening. or listening and you uh, go to our church because we, we want this – message to help anybody but especially if you're in our church and you just go man i really need help there's other resources we could be happy to help you in our church services and uh and pray with you encourage you because god's ways are good yeah yeah if you're watching on youtube make sure to subscribe if you're listening on podcast make sure to subscribe (laughs) if you're listening on apple podcast make sure to leave a a review a rating that's right that's right Hey, share this podcast with some friends and, um, you know, give us a shout out on Instagram if you're listening to this and, uh, it's just cool to see, you know, a lot of work goes into these. So it's cool to see people, um, when they listen to it, enjoy it or it helps them. So, okay. Have a great day. Why don't you just get, say a blessing. All right. Just, uh, God, God bless you. Yeah. May God bless you and may God's word strengthen you and may you be encouraged to follow him in every area of your life. And give glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. See you guys next time.